Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, distinguished council members, I'm honored to be here today to introduce the latest report of the Secretary General on the activities of the United Nations Office for West Africa and the Sahel, UNOWAS. Since my last briefing, further progress has been made in democratic consolidation in West Africa and the Sahel, despite persisting security challenges. In the Lake Chad Basin, Boko Haram attacks over the past months, notably against military installations, have increased. During the last week of December alone, Boko Haram launched three separate attacks on army bases in the Borno and Yobe states of Nigeria, killing numerous soldiers, police personnel, and civilians, while seizing equipment and weapons. Violent clashes between farmers and herders are also continuing, although on a lesser scale, thankfully, than in the first half of 2018. The security situation also remains volatile in the Sahel. In Burkina Faso, a state of emergency has been declared in seven of the country's 13 regions, in the north, the west, and the east, against the backdrop of a significant rise in security incidents. Despite mass mobilization, defense and security forces in Niger continue to face challenges in the West and South. Increased attacks and kidnappings by extremist groups are heightening security risks in Niger, Benin, and Togo. Rising insecurity has placed a heavy burden on governments in the region. Against the backdrop of high population growth and worsening youth unemployment, economic austerity measures, including the elimination of subsidies on basic items in some countries, have also heightened social tensions. Mr. President, distinguished members of council, in its efforts towards advancing the long-term stabilization goals of the region, UNOWAS continues to work closely with regional partners, including ECOWAS, the JSANC Sahel, and the Lake Chad Basin Commission, LCBC, including within the framework of the United Nations Integrated Strategy for the Sahel. Laudable progress was made in the implementation of Security Council Resolution 2349 of 2017 to support a regional response to the crisis in the Lake Chad Basin. On 30th August, the LCBC Ministerial Council adopted a regional strategy for stabilization, recovery, and resilience of the Boko Haram affected areas of the Lake Chad Basin. The meeting took place before the high level conference on the Lake Chad region, which was held from 3 to 4 September in Berlin, during which partners pledged over $2 billion to help meet the needs of the more than 17 million people affected by this crisis. However, more support is needed to advance the stabilization efforts in the Sahel, and I commend partners for the commitment to provide $2.4 billion to finance the priority investment plan of the JSANC Sahel, which was presented on 6 December in Nouakchott. I urge governments and partners to ensure a rapid implementation of these much needed medium and long-term stabilization measures, as well as a speedy disbursement of funds to respond to the urgent needs on the ground, thereby fostering stabilization, recovery, and development. I also commend the holding of the ECAS ECOWAS Joint Summit on 30 July in Lome as an important step towards addressing cross-border threats facing West and Central Africa. As one of the key outcomes of the summit, heads of state and government affirmed their readiness to enhance the inter-regional collaboration to jointly address threats to peace and security, including from violent extremism. 
They also committed to holding regular meetings to identify measures for the prevention and peaceful management of farmer herder conflicts. Your Excellencies, in the past six months, presidential elections were successfully organized in Mali, and regional and parliamentary elections in Mauritania and Togo, respectively. And local elections were organized in Cote d'Ivoire. However, despite appreciable progress in democratic consolidation in the region, there is a need for continuous effort to address contentious issues around elections in order to prevent and mitigate election-related violence, as well as to support inclusive dialogue as a key attribute of inclusive societies. This is even more important, as over the next six months, the region will see several high-stake elections in Nigeria, in Senegal, in Mauritania, and Benin. In Nigeria, tensions are high ahead of the presidential and parliamentary election of 16 February and the gubernatorial and state assembly elections of 2nd March. However, the prospects for peaceful and credible elections have been increased following the signing of the National Peace Accord in Abuja on 11 December. Over the coming weeks, I will continue to engage actively with all stakeholders in Nigeria, particularly the National Peace Committee, including also through organization of peace fora in a number of key states, such as Benue, Rivers, Kaduna, and Kano, and indeed a few more may be included. Mr. President, several countries in the region also continue to struggle with justice and human rights challenges. I'm particularly concerned about the allegations of human rights violations by security forces, as well as the increasing re-emergence of self-defense groups, whose actions have been fueling intercommunal tensions in some countries. While security operations must be carried out in full compliance with international humanitarian law, human rights and refugee laws, non-state access also need to be held accountable for any crimes committed. As reaffirmed in the recently concluded joint UN World Bank Pathways for Peace study, women's marginalization continues to be a cause and consequence of instability and conflict. During the annual review of progress made in West Africa and the Sahel, Concerning, implement, <coughs> excuse me, concerning implementation of Security Council Resolution 1325 of 2000 on women, peace, and security, the discrimination and marginalization of women from political processes was once more highlighted. During the event, which took place on 26 November in Praia, Cabo Verde, it was noted that women comprise less than 15% of parliamentarians, for example, in several countries of the region. My office will continue to work with all regional actors to strengthen the role of women in the region. Distinguished members of council, Mr. President, the next cycle of elections in the region will be a litmus test for the consolidation of democratic gains ensuring the enabling environment for the full respect of human rights will be key for the success of these elections and in safeguarding stability in the region. Furthermore, preparing the ground for elections through support for inclusive dialogue and national conflict prevention capabilities will continue to constitute a priority for the region and my office. The rising number of attacks and the increasing sophistication in the attacks deployed, the tactics deployed by extremist groups, the risk undermining our collective efforts in the region. Military solutions, while necessary, are not sufficient. I encourage all actors to ensure holistic responses grounded in the respect of human rights and the socioeconomic needs of the population in the affected areas. 
through inclusive approaches predicated on national ownership, we must continue to work hard on addressing the governance deficits, the extreme poverty, and the lack of development that feed and sustain armed violence and extremism. In conclusion, let me assure you of the continued commitment of UNOWAS to work with all stakeholders in the region to promote peace and stability in West Africa and the Sahel and trust that we can continue to rely on the strong support of this August Council. And I thank you for your attention.